Uh, hello again. Uh, sorry for the uh, technical bombardments, but uh, I I didn't fix this be because it's I think it's a good thing um, to have a lecture in a couple of parts because it's easier to um, convert uh, to MP4. So uh, let's just stick with that. And I'm going to share my screen again uh, if it's recording. Yeah, it's recording. Okay. Um, what are we talking about? Um, yeah, Zeynep, I guess you didn't uh, give a uh, reason why we play games. So if you have any. No, I gave. I haven't talked. Ah, Eylül, okay. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Uh, it it makes you feel successful, actually. Mm. Okay. It satisfies you. Mm -hmm. These are uh, these are good definitions. Um, there are some complex definitions that I uh, complex uh, reasons that I found uh, on the internet as well. Uh, so the basic argument is we play games because they're fun. I don't agree with that though, uh, but that's the first thing that comes to mind. Uh, if we say that games good games are fun, we should ask what is funny. And uh, a game designer, Horst Streck, sorry, Streck, uh, describes fun as the enjoyment of pleasure. Uh, and uh, enjoyment and pleasure sounds like similar things, but uh, he differentiates those uh, with the following reasoning. I mean, you probably, um, finds a back rub, you know, uh, a massage uh, pleasurable. But if you are trying to focus on something, uh, the enjoyment is not there. So you don't enjoy uh, getting your back rubbed. So uh, for you to um, have fun, you should um, be willing, you should be a willing participant. Uh, and this is uh, a key concept. Uh, that's why I uh, took this um, approach of uh, horse strike. Um, no one can make you have fun. You need to. Uh, you need motivation to be receptive to fun. It's something like Jamie Mas said. I mean, if it's not possible for someone to laugh, I can't make them laugh. Uh, so just. Keep that in mind. I mean, uh, you will uh, sometimes uh, as designers find yourself at a position when um, your target audience is so hard to crack up and so hard to uh, create fun, create a funny experience. I mean, you can be uh, you can be creating a game for um, a sick person. Uh, there are serious games uh, that's help uh, some uh, patients uh, to overcome their uh, pains. And for instance, uh, my thesis will be on uh, an augmented reality uh, game, uh, which helps autism, uh, which helps kids with autism. Uh, so it will be hard for me to make them have fun. Uh, and uh, I should uh, start with a realistic um, approach. Uh, it will be hard. Uh, and after that, uh, you try to think about the ways that they will have fun. Small, small things, uh, such as um, which, um, I don't know, which um, animes do they watch in those years? which uh, color combinations do they find uh, pleasurable? These kinds of things, you know? Uh, and yeah, um, this is why I like to uh, mention this description and let's move on. Uh, another 
uh, useful approach uh, is the one that uh, takes you what you just said uh, and turns it into a um, basically two by two grid. So uh, Bartle, Richard, Richard Bartle uh, defines uh, some player types. So he argues that we play games um, because of different reasons. And uh, he says that there are four uh, main motivations for a player to play games, and there are four uh, different player types. Uh, I, I argue that um, this is a good approach, but this is uh, missing something. I believe that uh, a player can be an achiever for a game and explorer for another game and killer for some games and socializer for another game. So uh, for me, when I'm playing an RPG, I'm mostly a socializer, explorer sometimes and achiever some in some rare equations. But uh, in uh, Dota, I'm mostly an achiever uh, and killer. I don't enjoy uh, exploring Dota's, Dota world. Uh, yeah, that's what I would like to add. And uh, still, though, it's a good uh, explanation of uh, gamers, players. So I would like to uh, go into details. Uh, so achievements is basically trying to get more points. Uh, by the way, these are not uh, player types, but these are the four, mot four basic motivations. Uh, achievements can be going up in the uh, ladder, uh, such as uh, if you have a rating system and you are going up uh, boards uh, in that rating system, it's, it can be considered as an achievement for many players. Uh, for instance, if you have played Hearthstone, there's a special uh, place for best players, uh, which is uh, a legend bracket. And uh, most players' uh, life goal is to reach that uh, in their lifetime. And immersion is basically Im imagining yourself in uh, the game world. Uh, and if you uh, have played um, a huge AAA game, like uh, Witcher 3 or um, Skyrim. Uh, there's a huge world that, where you can uh, traverse and you can uh, enjoy. And it's amazing to uh, see other um, people creating such big worlds. So you may find this enjoyable. Uh, another motivation for us is competition, uh, like we discussed. Um, in many cases, um, this goes hand in hand, in hand with uh, achievements, but not always. Uh, as an example, uh, we can uh, take uh, Flappy Bird. Flappy Bird is an uh, achievement-based game, but not a competition-based game. So it's single player. Uh, in competitions, you try to defeat other players, and this becomes your main motivation. Uh, and co cooperation is another uh, approach of selling games and creating games. Uh, you create um, a field of co communication and cooperation, uh, and you um, encourage uh, your players to work as a team. Uh, and sometimes it's also possible to uh, blend competition with cooperation. Uh, a great example of that is um, football, um, but also maybe we can discuss that Among Us is also a game of such kinds. So in Among Us, uh, there are basically two teams uh, and uh, in one team, there are villagers, we may call, uh, that are trying to uh, hunt the imposter. Uh, and imposter team is basically trying to uh, hunt uh, villagers. But at the start of the game, villagers don't know who is the imposter. So that's the fun funny part. Uh, they try to cooperate 
uh, with other players and try to deduce uh, who is the uh, imposter. Um, by the way, if is there if there's anything you would like to add or any questions, go ahead. Okay, uh, then we move on to the player types, achievers. So we briefly uh, talked about achievers. Um, I created a long um, description of achievers, um, but basically they say things like, I'm busy, uh, I mean, sure, I'll help you, but what do I get uh, in return? Uh, and they want to uh, gain the knowledge of um, moving up uh, in the game. So they want to uh, kill uh, the uh, dragon uh, and they want to uh, know how they kill the dragon. And uh, they don't stop uh, playing a game once they are in the game. So uh, even if they have uh, many points uh, to go up a level, they just continue gaming. And they are loyal players, uh, basically. So if your game is... Uh, this is an important point, actually. Yeah, uh, it's good that uh, that came up to my mind. Uh, if your game is... Um, based on uh, a good achievement system then uh, your marketing uh, strategy will be on getting new uh, but loyal gamers so you won't be uh, spending money trying to get random people on the internet if you um, are using your mobile phones uh, a lot you will see that um, most of the um, advertisements that show up to your screen are hyper casual games because they are not uh, hunting for the achievers they are hunting for um, everyone okay there's someone coming Özgür is here with us Özgür. Hey. Hello. Uh, can you uh, open up your camera? Okay. Hello. Uh, okay. We were talking about achievers, uh, a player type uh, that is that has the main motivation of uh, achieving something, uh, getting more points and uh, spending a lot of time in a game so uh, like i said um, players in hyper casual games are not uh, mostly achievers uh, they are just spending their time um, and uh, achievers are loyal and they generally stick to a game uh, so i played um, chess from the age of uh, five, six. So, uh, and when I, whenever I go to a tournament, I see players that started at an early age and they're still playing the game. Um, some of those chess players may be achievers. Some of them may be, um, what was that? Comp not socializer, but yeah, some of them may be killers, uh, but uh some like many many of them uh, are uh, not explorers or not socializers i can say that um yeah explorers explorers are um in the game for one reason uh, they want to uh, explore the world and they want to um uh, immerse uh, they, they want an immersive experience uh, so if you want to drive attention of explorers 
you must, uh, as a game designer, uh, create uh, a cloud of um, mystery. And you should um, create a um, delight of, um, what can I say? Like, they should, they should want to uh, know more about your game. So maybe you can show some glimpses of um, your world, some uh, glimpses of your um, creation, and then you can drive their attention. And you can also, for for uh, all uh, player types, by the way, uh, if you are if you have decided on your player type, you can uh, also. Uh, search for the games they play um, and uh, let's say that um, you have come to the conclusion that um, uh, achievers are playing Dota, what else, chess, and you are targeting uh, achievers, okay? You, you talk to your um, marketing team uh and ask uh, your marketing team to uh show advertisements to those uh who play chess so this can be a good strategy or uh, most uh, players in uh, the explore uh, explorer category are playing games such as journey um, and alice in wonderland maybe uh, or Skyrim sometimes. Uh, so you go ahead for um, those kind of players and then you target those with your advertisements. So you spend your uh, money um, intelligently. Um, so this should be the main take uh, from our part. And um, similarly, um, explorers say that uh, say things like hmm this is interesting hmm you mean you don't know the shortest road from a to b then maybe i should find this uh shortest path uh, and some of those explorers uh, become speedrunners who um, try to find the shortcuts of finishing your game uh, and uh, they are really uh, willing to try new things uh, and my hypothesis is that explorers are not that loyal towards your game because uh, they might find it uh, interesting to try out another world uh, that they haven't tried so uh, you have to make sure that your um, you you will have one of two strategies you will if you are um, not hesitant with your game, if you are uh, thinking that your game is great, you can uh, try to keep them in your game uh, with a good achievement system, maybe, or with other strategies, uh, such as, I don't know, rewarding them with something if they stay, uh, or uh, you can just give up on them and try to gain other players. These strategies go hand in hand. And um, another, th yeah, there's a definition, uh, long definition uh, for socializers. I won't go in, in, into details, uh, but uh, this is uh, in the presentation uh, so that when I upload, uh, you will be able to read uh, the definition. Uh, and socializers say things like, hi, of course, they, they are uh, great at communicating. Uh, they Or they want to be better at communicating. Um, and they can go into um, like some personal, uh, not game related topics. Uh, they can uh, ask, what happened? I missed it. I was talking uh, with players and, and they, they can sometimes say that to their um, family uh, and uh, really oh no 
Gee, that's terrible. Are you sure? Awful, just awful. They're uh, empathetic uh, in a way. They're communicative. Uh, but this can be a problem uh, for some games. Uh, for instance, uh, if you have a competitive game and uh, some socializers uh, try to get in the game because they think it's fun and they think there are lots of people uh, playing the game. For instance, Hearthstone uh, or Clash Royale. Uh, they can talk uh, a lot, uh, and your uh, and they can change um, the experience of other players uh, in the ways that you cannot imagine, uh, you cannot foresee. So uh, sometimes uh, when you are trying to create a, a competitive experience, uh, they can just um, the other player if the other player talks much. Uh, they can ruin that experience, or uh, yeah, that's that's actually the main um, trouble with those uh, players. So uh, a solution against that is uh, blocking the communicative ways. Um, for instance, in both Clash Royale and Hearthstone, uh, in-game talking is really limited, um, but in Hearthstone and also in uh, Clash Royale, you can talk outside of the game when you are just um, ch uh, chilling uh, in the lobby. Uh, so, yeah. And uh, and uh, it's easier to uh, block chats uh, all together so that you don't deal with, um, you know, uh, cussing. Uh, cussing is uh, saying bad words. Uh, so there, there, if if you are adding a chat system, uh, you should also think about, um, like I said, cussing a report system, et cetera, et cetera. And these uh, blow up the cost of creating a game. Uh, so for instance, we are uh, currently uh, discussing about if we should uh, add a chat system at, uh, for our uh, new game in minus uh, so if we decide on that chat system will uh, delay our um, deployments time too much then we can just remove our chat system so yeah um, and killers say like say things like uh, you are cowards uh, die I'm happy because of this I, I killed you uh, greatly now you are a noob or stuff like that um, they are um, somehow uh, the opposites of social uh, players. Um, they they like to communicate, uh, but uh, they like to communicate to dominate. Uh, dominate. Um, and there's a um, chart uh, that shows the um, two dimensions uh, of those gamers. So killers are killers and achievers like to act but one of uh, them uh, wants to interact with uh, world more uh, i mean achievers like to concentrate on the world and killers wants to con concentrate uh, on other players and socializers also like to uh, focus on uh, players but they uh, like interacting rather than acting and taking a um, uh, move. Explorers also uh, like interact interacting with the world. Uh, so yeah, uh, this is what is covering. Um, though we should also mention that I really liked um, this definition, but uh, the guy that came up with the, this definition uh, said that this model uh, is for multi-user dungeons. Not, I mean, he didn't. Maybe uh, Noja is here also. If, yeah. Let's wait for her.
Hello, Ms. Arimos. Can you hear us? Oops. She's, did I? Let me check. I didn't take it. Can we go back to page 28? Sure. Thank you. No problem. Um, yeah, uh, so he didn't. Let me check. Oh, okay. Hmm. Okay. She clicked accidentally, maybe. I saw Devin Arilmas in our room. So, is it possible to change your name? I don't know. Okay, whatever. Um, so, killers. Uh, we talked about those. Um, and some designers talk about play value rather than uh, motivations. Because, uh, I mean, we talked about four motivations, but uh, probably we are skipping some of the motivations or we are um, simply mixing two motivations and coming up with a third motivation. So maybe we are uh, overseeing some motivations. Uh, probably we are overseeing some motivations, overlooking them. So it's uh, maybe it may be better to uh, talk about play value rather than actual motivation. And play value is an intrinsic feeling uh, of uh, something. Uh, play value can be uh, considered for toys and games. Yeah, so uh, I, I'm going to read the definition. Uh, play value is the essential value of a toy or game for play. Um, so uh when they're fun and in engaging uh play things and play spaces uh are said to have play value uh by play spaces um uh, you are considering um uh, some amusement parks for instance uh, these are not exactly games or uh, toys but they are playing fields and even uh, the uh, children's area at Burger King or McDonald's could be considered as a playing space. Uh, so uh, when we're assessing uh, playing games and playing fields, uh, we are thinking about uh, fun and engagement. Yeah, we will talk about uh, them both when uh, during our design lectures. Uh, in detail, uh, I mean, we uh, our our two goals uh, will be creating a funny experience and creating an uh, engaging experience because you want loyal players, basically. Uh, and yeah, uh, another um, great example of engaging um, games and toys uh, are generally tested through time so they should pass the uh, test of time and they should uh, remain uh, playable uh, after a long time so uh, classic toys like um, i don't know uh, like cars uh, wooden cars uh, will remain uh, for a favorite uh, toy of most uh, small children. And uh, chess 
uh, although it's uh, game aged uh, thousands of years, it will stay uh, as a classic game. And uh, we didn't talk about Go, but Go is uh, another uh, Chinese classic. It's similar to uh, chess in some ways, but it's considered to be a harder and more strategical game. So this can be a classical game as well. And role-playing games are also classics uh, because uh, D&D is here with us uh, for, I don't know, 20 years or so. Um, and uh, like, yeah, uh, would you like to add something or ask something? Okay, a small break. Mm, okay. Now, by the way, would you like to have a small break? I don't. I'm going on with, uh, without stopping. Okay. Mm, if not, that's fine. Okay. Another um, definition um, uh, of good games comes from um, design uh, XEO design CEO, uh, Nicole Lazaro. And uh, Nicole describes uh, four keys of fun. So this is another categorization, but um, this is another categorization. And this is a similar categorization actually. Uh, so you can drive some similarities. Uh, she says that there's easy fun that comes from novelty uh, there is hard fun that comes from challenge. Uh, there is fun when you interact with p other people, and there is serious fun. Um, so, uh, for serious fun, I, I like the term serious fun because um, I like um, I remember a discussion uh, about um, chess. I I really talk about chess a lot, but uh, it's uh, probably the game I play the most uh, in my life. So uh, one of the friends uh, asked me, like, uh, asked me if chess is uh, funny. And I answered, it's not uh, funny, it's uh, serious, but it's exciting. Uh, so um, you don't laugh when you are playing chess, but you are engaged uh, and you are uh, having pleasure playing it. So yeah, uh, this is another categorization. And the formal approach is um, categorizing uh, aesthetics within games. So uh, this uh, approach does not categorize, but uh, this approach sees games as a, a combination of um, some uh, fields. So uh, some games uh, can have narrative elements, uh, like it's written here, and they can also have some fantasy elements. So you, uh, the, the, these are not uh, the opposites of each other, but these are the elements uh, that can come uh, together and create uh, a good experience. Yeah. Um, and submission game as a mindless uh, passing time. This, this is uh, actually covering most hyper casual games. Yeah. Um, And uh, the reason I put this uh, on the slides is because um, the writer of this paper uh, says that um, we are trying to focus uh, on the actions of a game first. So do you have a game idea that you would like to share? Uh, if you don't have a gaming idea, just 
um, describe your favorite game without saying its name, okay? Erdem, would you like to start? Uh, yeah, I, I can describe my favorite game. Mm -hmm. uh, but shouldn't I uh, say his name, right? No, yeah, yeah, you shouldn't say its name. So you describe your favorite. Okay. Or a game, uh, it's, it shouldn't uh, be your favorite game. I mean, you can choose any game. Okay. Uh, or should it be a video game or? No, it's, it doesn't okay, matter. Okay, I will go on with it. Yeah. Okay, then. I want to go on with the video game. Uh, it's a turn based strategy game that you play. Uh, it has a series of games and it covers much time of the history eras. Uh, you can build armies, uh, you can build your cities, and you uh, can as a goal, I, I missed. Uh, improve your cities, uh, armies, mm -hmm. everything, and you, uh, the main goal is overcome all the other powers. Uh, it has different goals, but long term. Mm -hmm. uh, you are trying to capture as much as cities or some key cities and be the uh, supreme power. Yeah, okay. Uh, that's uh, great. Uh, and Özgür, would you uh, choose a game and describe it without saying its name? Mm -hmm. You can play with ten people in each match. Mm -hmm. um, it is character only. It is what? It is like virtual levels. Okay, uh, your uh, voice is really distorted, but uh, I get the gist of it. So uh, both of you to uh, talked about what you can do in a game rather than the aesthetics of the game. Uh, and I will talk more about that. Um, but before that, I should send, uh, I, I, we are going to take a 15 minute, minute break and then we will talk uh, on those more.